But if we locked in with Willie for extensive years, Willie has to some pressure has to be put on Willie to become a better coach. If you're bringing in assistant coaches, for goodness sake, start listening to them, bro. Especially offensively speaking, and develop another goddamn philosophy for switch all. When the switch all is not working, do something else. Learn something else. Do something else, please. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna get the four you guys before we get ready to leave. I'm getting pissed in this thing now about this switch all shit. Oh, switch it. We switch everything. And if you don't win, switch all until you die. That's Willie's mentality. <laughs> switch all. It's a new shirt we need to print out. It's called Switch All Until You Die. That's what it say, is. Say, 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 if Willie yeah. Green played baseball, what, what position would he play? <laughs> I don't know, brother. A switch hitter? Is that there what you go. There you go. Switch it all forever. All the time. Switch all to switch you. everything. Switch it all. Hey, uh, what? Switch the rotation to all defensive guys. Don't do none of the shit I saw. Switch all. Switch all defensive guys while needing offense. And double down on it. <laughs> that just doesn't make sense, man. I'm going to look at what's working. I'm going to do the opposite. You know? Uh, oh, the people have been having success playing, you know, bigger, faster uh, athletic guys. I'm going to play all small guys, Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> all teams have been having success Playing more players that can shoot all together. I'm gonna play all players that can't shoot. You. <laughs> See, you make jokes, that's exactly what he did. Switch it up. While, switch it up, bro. While looking for those players to put offense up, it's the craziest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you? Know, where? You know the way, You know the, the move that, that that broke me this season, bro. I knew it was officially over. I watched the Pelicans. Give Matt Ryan, with the, they gave him a contract at the end of the season. Well, he got a two year contract, I think. So he's back. And I'm like, okay, we got like five games left. So they're going to start, you know, giving Matt Ryan some, some minutes. So maybe we can utilize, nope. you know, him in the playoffs because they, they gave him a contract, you know, to fulfill this spot. I didn't think they was going to like highlight him or nothing. I, I thought he would like at least get in the game. He didn't play no minutes, Q. No minutes. After about, the, after about the second, third game of that shit, I said, yeah, it's over. That's what no I'm saying. Dice, no Mad Ryan. And I'm like, why? <laughs> We're struggling. Actually, man, really, man. He don't know his team, bro. And he, he gets stuck on once. He got he gets he gets us uh, he gets uh total vision. Man, can we please get Larry Nance out there? I actually like Larry Nance as a player, but the way that Willie Green thinks he is just the cure all be all for every goddamn thing I'm sick of with you. I know, man. Get Willie him, Willie loves Larry Nance. Not because he's a horrible player, but because no, Willie Green just has too much, much faith and trust in him. He's in love with Larry Nance. Loves Larry. Look, Larry just Larry's got off the answer game. for everything. Man, ain't no ramp up here for Larry. Larry, I remember Larry just had got off the injury list. He just was made available. I said, well, he's not going to play him that much as a ramp up. Boy, that boy played <laughs> like 25, 26 minutes in that first game. Man, it was no damn ramp, ramp up. up only exists with Zion. Well, Zion is only on the ramp same up. Same thing with Jose Alvarado. As soon as Jose Alvarado came off his injury, he started playing him. I'm like, dang. <laughs> loves, Y'all ain't loves ramping that. him up. Loves Larry. And, but see, the thing is, too, he overused Larry. And and it's the thing about that's what I'm saying about Willie Green. I don't know what Willie be thinking at times, man. I really don't. And I like Willie Green. I like Willie, but you can't get away from the low basketball. I don't basketball like him line. as a coach. I mean, I like him. I, I, he's a good dude. You don't like as him a, as a person? What? Yeah, he's a good human being, Big Q. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. He's, a good, he's a good human being, of course. Is David Griffin and the bleachers over that way? Is David Griffin in attendance? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's talk about that human being. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it's true. She, what she's saying about him is true. That Willie Green, man, he needs to have he needs to take like a, a quantum leap this upcoming season. He really does. And uh, and he he can't afford bro, quantum you can't afford. Leap. Up out of the organization and on to somewhere else. God damn. I mean, look, I still feel like we need to put trade packages together for Griff and Willie. Okay? 
I mean, I'm looking at uh, Dang, 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 with a third round pick for that and, shit. Uh, and yeah, whoever, get, whoever uh, the vibe the there is, I, I you like you them at OKC. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lex, anybody else got any suggestions for trade packages for Griff well, and, uh, and Willie? Lex, you ain't getting nothing back. Let's talk about it. But you ain't getting nothing back for him. You get you getting like a, a trash bag full of people. Hey, my dog, not not Gail, man. My dog said trade Gail too. God damn. You, you, hey, you getting okay. back hey. a trash bag That's full of cool. people. That's speakers. cool too. Uh, Let's some Folgers. Folgers coffee. Uh, yeah, you get a, you get a trash bag. I can see what you're gonna get back. This is what you're gonna get back for Willie and David Griffin. You get a trash bag full of P. Miller sneakers. Uh, about a half a dozen of no, of, we need we need assets. Oh, okay, my bad. I thought you. you we need trying people. To, That's why I was saying oh. like trade trade uh tra- trade uh what is it Griff for Sam Presti or something. Oh hell no! Nah. Think you about that. Keep, nah, they're <laughs> not gonna give <laughs> hell no. Nah. The best you are gonna do hey. is a trash bag full of P. Miller sneakers. If the Clippers uh, some, didn't win, uh, the Clippers. Clippers. What? Where you get okay. that from? from yeah, that's what I'm. That's I'm what I'm drawing. You gonna what, get? You gonna get some? Uh, so you are gonna get a half a dozen of dented uh, pep sodas. You are gonna get? Uh, let's see what else. You <laughs> a beige and pink and, and purple dot jalopy. And the last thing you are gonna get is a half burnt down building with a mortgage on the unburnt down side. That is all you're gonna get right now hey, for those guys. So you I was thinking about. maybe maybe we could we could trade uh for Gail. We could trade her for for Mark Cuban. What y'all think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they'll go. We for talking it. about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I think we gotta keep our uh, minds who, 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 open. Who, who, who we give up? Who we give up in that trade? The box, y'all. Come on now. Are we paying? Are we paying a percentage of uh, Dallas's next arena uh, building fees? <laughs> what are we giving? No, uh, the, the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys owner. He got that handle. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I think that'll work. I think that's wishful thinking, Lex. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? Then all this, all this is wishful thinking until it happens, right? <laughs> like the trade with Brandon right, for Trey Young, you know what I'm saying? Ain't, ain't we all doing this with you? We, we do this stuff I all think, the time. I think I mean, we, we gotta start drug it? testing, dog. I'm, we gotta start drug I'm, testing for Hopi and bro. I we, think gotta, we, we gotta do random stuff. Hey, look, look, <laughs> look, 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 it, look, we say it all the time from top to bottom. That's what the pro- that's the source of the problem. And in, and in order to really change the direction, the whole complexity of the organization, it starts from the top. You know, I, I know it, I know it may be funny to everybody, but it's like, shoot, if we trade in players, why can't we we we, we trade the up and ups too? Because it's happened. It has happened. It don't happen a lot. I mean, if GM, saying, a GM like, has got traded, I only seen coaches be traded before. Hey, Willie She's Green get me to go. <laughs> you want to trade? I know you want to trade Willie Green to Detroit so he can be in Well, Willie number. Green got to go, though. I mean, it's you. That's, look, we can at least start there, but God. We'll trade Green. him to Detroit. He can go over there and he can play Monty the, Ball. The, 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 the mentality <laughs> of, of the – the mentality of the office got to get better, man. I mean, it's poor right now, and it's not. It's it's not. It's not long term. It's not. It's not huge value. It's like it's just low and it's cheap. I mean, it's it, it's just got to get better. You know what I'm saying? So, and plus, I mean, obviously, you're talking about all the mistakes that the Grifton made. You know what I'm saying? Gail made a mistake by hiring Griff. Griff making a mistake, you know, drafting players, you know what I'm saying? And and then forcing the coach to play the players. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. It's it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess up in there. Yeah, it, 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 they got to change it around. Like I said, the New, and I've said this before, that they need to reformat the, this, the Pelicans and the St. Paul's <laughs> by the same people. And the, like I said, I think uh, – they need somebody else up there, like on the football side of it. They need to. Dennis Lausia needs to 
to be not the president of any of these organizations. He's transformed him to like the CFO, the chief financial officer. He deals with the money. But they need another person on the basketball side and the football side that were former mm-hmm. players, like a like comes from the John Lynch model, like played football and went to the exec program and climbed the organization. There are plenty of those type of people out there. Now, as far as the Pelicans, I think Swin Cash. I've been saying maybe I'll speak it into existence, but I think Swin should be the top person for that job as president because you want a winner. You don't need a a, 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 a BS. We don't play that down here. We don't play no BS. We don't like listen to you prattle on about uh, good human beings and all this. We don't care about and that. And then we'd rather listen to Swin. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, at least makes sense. Swin, right. Swin, Swin is straight. She's a sharpshooter. She's a winner. She won everywhere. She has gold medals, mm-hmm. one, in, one in college, one in the pros, one three championships. <laughs> it's the Hall of Fame. Now, you want to talk about that, and you got Gail as the owner, then you got the president of, of the Pelicans, Swin, who's a winner, who has all that basketball knowledge. You got damn right I'll go for that. But we need people at the top that have that. That's winners who don't want to lose, who are just just winners out the gate. And she represents that. That's what we need. We don't need Flim Flam David Griffer, Grifter running around here on reps from that Cleveland Cavalier ring that LeBron basically helped him piece together because he can't even duplicate that. Come in here. Look, wow. I can do a laundry list of moves that didn't make any sense. I'm like, man, that, if you have a high IQ general manager, VP personality, these type of moves would have never happened because he would have seen a lot of that. Like, how do you have this, 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 this? this? How you come up in this mug in three years? You're five years in, in your first three years, you had three different coaches. What, what sense that makes? And then everyone, like I said, each one of them impact the third one because you couldn't afford to go and get the third one like a, like a more credible coach. You couldn't afford the guy that Phoenix got. Because Gail's not going to go up. She's not going to be spending all to operate, so you can't be making these kind of mistakes. Who goes and gets Stan Van Gundy? He wasn't coaching. He was tall. He was an analyst analyzing basketball games for the NBA for NBA TV. And prior to that, he was the general manager destroying the Pistons. I got a question. Crazy. How do you pull him out of your backside? Say, hey, man, you want to drop? Man, that make none of that made any sense, bro. That is not no smart VP. Do something like that. Go ahead, Lex. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you good. Um, how do you all feel about uh Sam Cassell? Like Cam Sam I like Cassell a lot. Like him I a like lot. him. Like him a lot. It's like uh you know, bird, it, uh, I, I think it's weird that he hasn't gotten the opportunity. I mean, he's been an assistant coach for too longer than Willie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's kind of surprising how he hasn't gotten an opportunity to be a head coach yet. Right. Um, I don't know what that I don't is. know. I don't know if there's a reason for that, but you know, I don't know. That would be kind of kind of nice to um and then um a possibility like maybe a possibility of either him or uh Rajon Rondo being a, an assistant coach on his staff. Yeah, yeah Rondo. How do you feel about was- that? That was a, I would love that because that's high IQ players right there. Sam Cassell was is ba- is basically like a basketball genius. His focus and how he talk. If you ever listen to Cassell's interview, how he talk about the game, he was a solid point guard too for Houston for some time. Mm-hmm. He dropped the NBA, so he was a guy that ran the position. He was always a, a smart brother. And then Rondo, y'all already know of Rondo. Yeah, the Lakers. They they were both those guys were listed as potential. Um, assistant coaches for JJ Reddit's staff in LA. Yeah, I mean, so, well, look, this staff needs to beef up, man. If you can get, because Rajon Rondo played for the Pelicans, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it kind of helps the situation. Hey, man, it's one of your own. You know what I'm saying? Go get him. He's a champion. You know what I'm saying? Plus, you know, Rondo got attitude about him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and plus, obviously, you know, he's a point guard. So his ability to see the floor, and I'm not talking about, I don't want you to say Willie Green was a point guard too. I ain't talking about that. No, he was a guard. For a guard, yeah. Yes. But you you see what I'm saying, man? Right. Like just just his basketball mind, you know, and and actually knowing what's out there. And I mean, I don't know, man. I just feel like 
if you're going to go and replace Borrego, if he is taken, you need to look at those two guys. And then I'll possibly mean, looking yeah. at these, those two guys replacing Willie down the road. You know what? Hey, I'll tell you one thing. You can't go wrong with Rondo on your team because at least I know Rondo would challenge the green. And that's what we need. We we, yeah. we we need coaches, and I know that they need the, they need guys on a challenge yeah. with the philosophy has been. I think that's a problem with the Pelicans, and that's why I called them. You know, I make a joke about them being a basketball coach because you got David Griffin talking about good human beings and all this bull crap. And where is the challenge of the philosophy? Like it just can't be the faithful saying, "Hey, man, what we see, we're going off based on what we seeing in these games." That has to be something going like that inside of the organization. Like, how can we get better? How are you going to get better if you don't look at the mistakes that you were making during the season? Like, a lot of pressure is focused on Willie Green. Willie Green has to improve as a coach. Are they going to have to get somebody else? And in this things under the rug, right? We can't do that because and the point was made. Look at what Phoenix did. Phoenix Frank Vogel has a championship. You know, he won it with what was that the bubble championship? I think he won. Frank mm-hmm. Vogel over the Suns. He has a he has what the same record as Willie. They had posted higher. You know, they took you know they went a little higher. He gets fired after he signed a multi year deal with him. He gets fired for Coach Budenheimer, who come button Budenholzer. I'm sorry that comes in and we know who he is. He won championship with the Bucks. He was always a solid coach. He has a lean. He has a ties to Coach Pop. He did a great job in Atlanta, built Milwaukee up. They won a championship with him, and he's a respected coach. The Pelicans, well, you know, they weren't even in the realm of going out and getting that guy because he wanted $10 million a year. He signed a five-year contract at $10 million a year. Not to mention, Phoenix still has to take care of the money with Frank Vogel after firing after one year, a successful year. But I've seen that trend. I've seen, I'm going to say this to you guys. You've seen what happened with J.B. Uh, J. Bickerstaff, where he did a good job in Cleveland and they fired him. What happened with Frank Bogle and they fired him. Guys that had winning years and they fired them because they felt like they can went, they could have went in a, they can go to another level because they felt like that guy wasn't going to get them to the level that they wanted to, to deal with because they had personalities on that and it needed a guy that dealt with those type of personalities before. And here we go with all this going on. The Pelicans just sitting cool, calm, and collected, watching it all go sign a secret extension. You see what the difference between people that know that they need a coach that take them far. You, this the team is going to go as far as Willie Green will allow them to go. His knowledge is what I'm saying. That has to be challenged. So you mentioned assistant coaches. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Rondo and Sam Cassell will make great coaches because both of those guys are are kind of outspoken players. Edgy. And come, right. And they would mm-hmm. do that. Like, man, what are Killer. we doing? Yeah. That's what we need. We don't need uh, a basketball coach of people, just everybody cool, and then you march them out of the playoffs. We had a good year. We won 49 games. We'll be back next year. To try. No. Yeah. I don't like that complacency or the, the ex- embracing mediocrity, man. Yes. I, I don't like that at all. That exit interview killed me. I'm like, dude, you better go kick rocks. Don't nobody got time for that. No, it's like th- this This team is our, has embraced mediocrity for a long time. It's time to ascend, and it's time to go to the next level. Like, you know, that 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 just wasn't cool, what he said, man. <laughs> it really wasn't. It, it's word salad, Lex. You, you, probably, you should be used to it from David Griffin. And, and, of course, like you said, we talk about, we kid you all the time about Willie Green and his lovely sins that's on the practice walls. None of it's aggressive. None of it is uh, from a, you know, a, you know, like you, it's nothing wrong with saying killer instinct because you need killer instinct to win in this league because other people utilize it. You got to have a high degree of you know how to put people out of the way, but it, they don't embrace that type of energy. They don't embrace that. Like you say, play with violence. He says, no, we're not going to play with violence. We're going to play with force. So you can see it's a different energy. What you saying versus what he's saying, because everybody say play with violence. Hell yeah, let's get it. You don't know. The, the force ain't with him. The, the force. force ain't with him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Play with, <laughs> play with force, young Padawan. Willie Green, the Jedi. He is, he plays with force. He's obviously a Star Wars fan. He got to be a Star Wars. <laughs> 
Jedi Willie Green. May the force be with the Pelicans. May the force. <laughs> may the force. May the force be with the Pelicans. Man, listen, man. But yeah, this is we joke about it all the time. Like we even talked about the the stuff on written on the practice walls together, and all of the the the, the words that's written there. They, it's not. Hold and up, that's, hold up. That's, that's, my man, my man Devin would like to put in. Okay, bro. Devin says. Who's going to address that one? I got you. Says, bro, <laughs> what do y'all want Willie to do if his players always hurt? How many y'all games do Zion play this year? <laughs> bro, listen. How many I games? Zion played like 60 something games last time I checked. I thought it was about 60. Was it 63? No. no. Uh, I he can put it. Play, what, 57? Okay. His guys always hurt. Does that include the, the games? They had them guys this year with the with Amy Atmore. Shout out to Amy Atmore. Amy Atmore, the physical therapist that the Pelicans had. Games <laughs> this year. More games than they ever played together. You can't use that bullshit excuse here no more. You can't use it this year. Not they, only that, how many how many played, du- double digit leads? Did they have this year? Why not? That's what I'm saying, bro. Oh. You, you still stuck on. You still stuck on what? two years ago, bro. Upgrade. Oh, and twenty six. Can twenty seven. Oh, and thirty. Yeah, explain look, that. Going from the third, look, look down, going into the fourth. Come on now, in the clutch. Oh, and twenty nine. That's baby. look. Play and that was with guys available, like dog. Oh, and twenty. I can't use that no more. I don't play. even know what the number is, but it's either 26, 27, or 28. One of them. Take your pick. All of oh, them. My man. Man. Oh, That's I, not good. Hold up. Gotta be fed up. Uh-huh. My man Devin Smith, he said, but he was hurt for the playoffs. So that's what he was talking about. Talking about the playoffs. And I, I would have to say, just being fair, he does have a point. Every time we've made it to the playoffs, we've never played in the playoffs and had B.I. and Zion. Man, you can say that. I would also say that's even more reason we need to blow it up and change. Right? No, well, come not on. Blow it up, but we need no. to change that. Yeah, you, you, bro. Listen, man, we've been hearing that old lame excuse for years about that, and we sat up there and we watched it this year. They played more games than they ever played together. Even Griffin now, said, the "Playoffs, the man. The man said his whole point was the playoffs." But, bro, but that, so that's what I'm saying. Well, the playoffs, bro, you 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 do the best that you can do with what you got in so far as of who you got. But still in all, it turns down to a philosophy thing, getting these guys ready to play. There is no way the Pelicans should have been ran out of there four to nothing against OKC. Come on now. We know B.I. was banged up. We know all this. But still in all, Willie Green, what the hell I want Willie Green to do? Dig into his goddamn bench. He had all season long to get other guys available to contribute to the team. During the season and he getting ready, possibly knew his, his his superstars or his big players would get hurt. We couldn't no, possibly who, have known that. Come on, bro. We don't. We, but you don't look at it like that. They'll tell you that the start of the season, when the start of the season, it's it's they do you do your very best to get there in terms of their health, and they had their players available. Zion played seventy games this year. 70 games this year. B.I. played 64 games this year. McCullum played 66 games. The top three guys played a lot of minutes for the team this year. And even Griffin said he's seen enough. And we're talking about regular season and playoffs to reset the core. He said he's seen enough. But we've waited for the team for four years. But it's not necessarily totally an injury situation. A lot of Pelicans have won more than 49 games last year. But a lot of these games, the Pelicans, when it came down to close games, they couldn't win because of philosophy, strategy, and doing dumb shit, bro. That had nothing to do with no goddamn injuries. Come on now. We sit up here and watch this stuff all the time, bro. Don't play that injury crap because everybody got to deal with injuries, man. It's up to the coach to develop that personnel. You got that's what you got depth charts for and backup players. They're not going to play like the stars, but they're designed to where you have guys that contribute that get you going in the interim until you get your guys back. But you can't have a Willie Green having players like Jordan Hawkins that can contribute in the play-in and he don't even sniff one minute or four minutes for his goddamn birthday. 
and he over leans on other players that he don't even have to. He chose to restrict the lineup. He didn't have to restrict the lineup. If, if you know you're dealing with issues and injuries, you got to bring players along. You got to understand who these guys are and how they can help your team. We've seen that the whole damn way. And once again, 0 and 28 or 0 and 29 in games where they're leading, starting the fourth quarter off. Starting the fourth quarter off. And some of the times they'd be losing by two or three damn points. So it's not necessarily all injuries. That's some shit that you got programmed by Griffin. Well, it's doing the injuries. Yeah, that's the same bullshit David Griffin would say. But he wouldn't say what I said about that 429. He won't say about what I say about them rosters, how them lineups is all screwed up, and how he's not developing them players and using them in the right way at the right time. That, now explain that shit. Go ahead, Lex. Y'all got the flow. Hey, hold oh, up, hold up. The man still replying, bro. Yeah. Oh, he's he, he saying a whole I lot, said of, lot stuff. of shit. But I, I, said all that, I don't think he watches the I television. just want to I won't keep it. I just want to keep <laughs> it. <laughs> said, like, what? He said, that's like the star player of Luka Kyrie was hurt. Do y'all think that there would be that they would be in the finals? Let's be realistic. Bro, this got to be, you know what, brother Devin? You know I'm not trying to compare it to my brother, but this you, you, hey, you got, man also says John Hawkins can't play defense. Do y'all watch the Pelicans? <sighs> bro, I mean, dude, y'all got that man. I'm gonna continue to be the referee. Go ahead, yes. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Get your ass out. Don't put let Lex be the referee. She got a whistle and everything. DC, you do uh, what you want. Let her take a break from that. She already doing that on her day job, man. Let her get a break from referee. I'm like, dog. Uh, <laughs> bro, you got yeah, it. Uh, let me ask you something. How you feel about CJ then? He making 33 mil, and you know what? The Thunder were hunting his butt. They were hunting Boy, that's, him. A, that's amazing to me how everybody you know jumped all yeah, over Brandon yeah, Ingram and they ain't saying nothing about CJ. Nobody ever said anything about CJ. He ain't no rookie. DC, hold on. Man, I can't get with Lexus. Jordan Hawkins plays just as good as defense, if not better, just because of his athleticism. Mm-hmm. If you go and watch the games, watch the film. Watch the film. Watch what, what Jordan does on weak side help. That dude got better. The thing is, he lost opportunities because if they, that wasn't a strong suit. Or, I don't know. Maybe he was a rookie. But the thing is, if you're going to talk about Jordan Hawkins, you might want to talk about CJ, who is a, a certified veteran. The Thunder, every single Thunder player hunted him on defense. But yet he was still playing. And he was not putting up 30. He wasn't doing that. Okay, so I mean, yeah, CJ was that, that that statement right there is like null and void. So you'd rather, and plus Jordan Hawkins is younger, and he a sniper. This dude got high praise saying, "Hey, this is a Ray Allen right here. This is this this is a a Steph Curry. It's hard to find the minutes, and you you telling me you can't put him in the game? You're you're willing to to bitch a, a Ray Allen? You're willing to to bitch a, a Steph Curry?" You gave them high praise like that, but but you're worried about his defense so much. But those guys, you're, you're the compensation on the defensive end is 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 recovered on the offensive end. That's what type of player that you have with Jordan. But because you 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 stop playing them, there was such a hiatus with with his playing time. You're not going to get that every time. You're shooting down his confidence, and you're you're asking CJ, who's a true two. You know what I'm saying? Same as Hawkins. Hawkins is a true two. You don't want him handling the rock. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, come on, man. Cause CJ, CJ was way worse. CJ was way worse. So I'm not, I'm really not, you know, Jordan Hawkins is young. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you knew this. A lot of rookies that come in, they're not, they're not really um, they're not really the greatest on defense anyway. So he fits right in. What you talking about? Uh, like I said, I, 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 the whole thing about the the injury thing that unran its course, bro. That's up out of here. That's done because you know, like I said, true, man. we've okay. seen. Definitely, definitely we've agree seen, that CJ is trash. We've <laughs> we've seen we've seen everything. To, listen, fam. The 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 biggest thing is not injuries. That's the that's the first thing people are are, are programmed to go after is the injury situation. You look at these games. You, you talking still about the got a coach, man. You still got, you got the coach. Team. That's you can't sit up here and say, "Well, we was hurt, we couldn't compete." That's not true. You got to use your team. 
That's why they assembled these players. In that, in that case, look at the Knicks, man. Look, look, look at how they lost the most Knicks, of their roster. Right? Yes. But let Julius me tell you Frampo something about energy. When you guys. play with a whole lot of energy and that will to want to win, let me tell you something. That can take you far. That can take you far. And having someone that can coach. The Knicks lost, like, most of their starters. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so – are we still using that as an excuse? We, we got to we gotta stop that, man. You still got to go out there and play your butt off. At least play with a lot of effort. Did you see any heart out there? Any heart, any effort, any killer? I mean, you, you got to have those things. And then, look, look, you should know your personnel well enough where you can still coach your team even without your star. They, they say a good team, a really good team is when – is when you're able to sit your star, or your, if your star goes down, that you can still win games. That can happen. It's happened in the past. That's basketball. That's how you know you're a good coach. I agree. That's that's what it comes down to. That's why these depth charts are assembled to brace for injury. Now, did nobody say we're trying to blow nothing up? I mean, the thing is, Griff made a lot of mistakes. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, the, the 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 organization has been very reactive. They haven't been proactive. They haven't been aggressive on making changes or or, or getting the pieces around. It's, it's basically like, you know, you can't beat around the bush. Like, listen, this team was what? The 49 and 33 this year? The mm-hmm. record? Okay. 49 and 33 last season would have had you in the third seed. What does that tell you? That tells you that the league is constantly getting better. You can't sit on your hands and twiddle your thumbs and do nothing while the rest of the league is trying to get better. You can't rely on that. It's like at some point you already have to collect the data and know, okay, look, we need to make drastic changes. It's like, dog, you like two seasons too late. That's why the Pelicans are behind. They're behind. They started yeah. their rebuild the same okay. as the Thunder and the same as the T Wolves. They started right. the same. Look where the Thunder and the T Wolves got. Yep. That's a great example. Though. I, 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 I ain't trying to hear that, man. It's about the decisions that you're making and it's about putting right, not making mistakes, and then coming back and, and covering up those mistakes because you know Rip is too cheap. He making cheap decisions and it's showing. It's showing. You can't do that. That hurts your organization. You're you're basically putting your organization in a bind. And that's one of the reasons why, look, if they offered that contract, if they offered that contract to Brandon, 50 mil, if they offered it, that's going to set your organization back even more. Nobody is going to take that, 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 that type of contract, especially for a guy who don't want to shoot threes. Y'all ain't ready for that. No, but that's that's right. the part I disagree with. I think Brandon would shoot threes if you we had a point guard that can get him some catch and shoot threes because I watched him shoot six threes a game. But that point is not a void out of here. This is the thing too, DC. I want to I want to draw into it, man. It's the 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 man, whole. Let's, let's move on. Uh. The whole scenario. We about to end the stream, but this the whole scenario about. Uh, blowing it up. You need to go back and listen to the whole show, brother, because we don't we're not advocating them to blow up the team. We we talking about because the team the team is not far off, but it's all about vision. They 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 decided to reset Griffin. This is his fifth year here. His fifth year here. I don't y'all got to look at the details because that's where it's at. It's in the details. You can't listen to everything they say because they just propaganda people. They just throw out a bunch of junk. The first thing they're going to spend is injuries. That's why the team underachieved. But there is no explanation for why they went 0 29 and when they didn't, when they went to the fourth quarter without the lead. There's no understanding. Do you not understand the Pelicans, if they were good enough, they could have ended up with 55 plus games? That would have been a whole different look for the Pelicans. They died out toward the back of the year. They died out. Then you talk about injuries. Willie Green didn't use his players, especially his bench players, the way he was supposed to. That was evident in the playoffs. You, If your team banged up like that, you're going to have to dig into the bench, man. That's why you develop these guys during the regular season. That's why there are depth charts. And I'm not going to talk about the Luka thing. I mean, you figure that one out. All I'm saying is you can't always step here and talk about it, using injuries as an excuse 
for underachievement of the team. They decided to reset the core of the team because it's at that interval where they're not going to play, play Brandon Ingram. And David Griffin said so himself. He's seen enough of it to know that they want to go in a different direction. He ain't going to pay B.I., which means if you're not going to pay B.I., you're going to trade him, which means C.J. got to go. Probably not right away but before the trade deadline. This is commonplace. So they have to add some more players to with Zion, whether that's Trey Young or whoever the case may be. You decide. You pick him, Darius Garland, whatever. They got to put somebody else there to help Zion as he's have this big part of his contract going forward or face the dreaded CP3 AD curse in which we get our stars. We pick these top people and then they end up leaving to go some to go help somebody else. Right. And that's, that's exactly what's going to happen if we get DeJounte Murray, Vicky. All right, I hear you, DC. DC wants to swing for the fences. I got you, DC. He is so mad. Zion, Zion uh, is on record. You got Lee on record saying he would, Zion would like to play with Trey. You got Trey Daddy saying uh, Trey would like to play with Zion. Like, the, the stars want to play with stars now, man. Uh, everybody don't seem obsessed to be, you know, super team star, but they want at least one other star. We got to get Zion a star player. I can guarantee you got it. So we 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 do this shit where we we trying to patch up more holes in the boat, and we uh we go and we don't get another star. We need a superstar to pair him with, man. You either got to find an up and coming one that's about to turn into it, you got time uh, that, for that he wants to play with, or you 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 have to. That's how you keep stars. You got to get him another star. Are we gonna lose? Let me ask, let me ask you this. This will be the last really question, simple, bro. This will be the last question before we end the stream. Let's say Dallas wins the Nas- the, wins the wins the uh, NBA championship. Let's say Dallas wins it, right? What kind of pressure does that put on the Pelicans, being that Dallas is coming out of the Southwest where we reside at? That puts an extreme amount of pressure on Dallas because you hear. already got to deal with uh, the up and coming Spurs, right? You got Dallas being the champs. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but Houston isn't exactly a descending team either. So it, it makes our division a lot tougher. And now we have to prepare our team to be able to compete with not only Dallas, but everybody else in our division. I mean, if you want to do something, you want to you want to win your division. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's always the foundation. You got all of those teams that you play more times than other teams. You kind of got to have roster to uh, compete with those men. We're getting pretty big in our division. You know, Dallas is a big team with the addition of all the big guys they added. And then you got the Spurs with what they're doing. Um, shit, with Benyama is like two centers in one. So I think it puts a lot of pressure on them, but it's not like um, pressure for us to win the championship next year. But if yeah, we want to compete, we talk too. about making the playoffs and being a, a team that um, oh yeah, maybe you're right. Let's mention that you bigger too. You talking about being a team that wants to contend, man? You got to look within your division, and we got all these teams in our division that <laughs> they looking like they they ready or they coming. You know, uh, Memphis is coming back, right? I didn't even mention Memphis. Man. I could just mention them. You mentioned too, so. We got pressure. Hey, can like, you imagine this? This is, a, this right is a, a opportunity for Griff to either to either make or break, man. If he swings for the fences and he hit it, he buys himself more time. If Griffin messes up this BI trade, man, you gotta fire. You gotta fire. If we go into next year and we have the same results we got this year, Will Green gotta be gone and David Griffin that has to be fired. Anything less than that, I mean, we just gonna keep saying the same thing for probably the next five or six years. If not worse, now it's actually going to be worse because Zion's not weak. Man, the Southwest, the bro, there's not going to be a, a more difficult division to play professional basketball in than the Southwest, man. Let me tell you something. If Dallas ends up getting the crown this year, man, that's going to be – that's going to be because Dallas, you know, if they win the championship – you got Houston. You mentioned Houston, who were 41 and 41. They're going to be better, a lot better, with Emi Udoka running them. Memphis, they were just destroyed by injuries, so you got to expect they're, they're going to be doing what they did prior. 
And then the Spurs and Wembyama, and they talking about swinging the fence to get a, a star to place next to him. Dude, the Southwest is going to be the most competitive division in all of the NBA next year. And the Pelicans are sitting their ass right up in the middle of it. So, man, like I said, that's why all of this is very important for what we're talking about. Like, you know, in, in D.C., that's why I see you've been advocating for the Trey, uh, the Trey uh, Mer- uh, Young thing, the Trey Young thing. We have two trades. But yeah, yeah. I've been a contrarian, you know, the other show talking about it because I think we have to give up something for it. But once we had tied to him, man, it's the only move that makes sense. Yeah, it, it's the most sense. Now we can do some other stuff. Instead. Well, the pressure on it, like, like you make a good case because, you know, I, I want to ask that because it Dallas comes, if Dallas, because they're in the finals, Dallas wins. If they win, the champ is in the same, is in the Southwest. And the Pelicans got all these other teams that will be better. There's no doubt in my mind that all of these teams will be better next year. We, we can't be bringing up the rear in the Southwest division. We got to ascend and we in trading out BI, you got to get good value, great value back for BI, you know, sending them out. So indeed, this is a pivotal moment for the Pelicans moving forward. No doubt about it. This is going to be very difficult coming up next year, man, for real. So anyway, Lex, Lex, I'm going to give you the floor for the last time and then we'll get up out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we need to do a, that's a draft show, Q2. Um, yeah, we got, some, yeah, DC is plenty. We got some more stuff coming. We got some more stuff coming. Go ahead, Lex, the floor is yours. Lex? Yeah, I'm here. No, nah, I was just, just going to uh, piggyback on what you all were saying. Like, I mean, Memphis, man. Man, you talking about they got Gigi, Ja, Bane, and, and Triple J coming back? Hold on just a second, man. Yeah, they, they got a lot of stuff going on with them, man. Uh, like I said, I was looking at some of these people, and I was like, man, the Southwest is going to be the best division in all of pro basketball. Especially, if, you know, and, and even if Dallas doesn't win the chip, that that still sets a high floor for them coming into the following year. Because remember the previous year, man, it was all kind of turmoil going on down there with Dallas. And Dallas started making moves, making trades, getting proactive. And next thing you know, they're in the damn finals. You know, I'm like, man, why can't we be like that? Why are we sitting up here talking? About, these people are acting like they got all the time in the world. And as long as we allow these people to sit here and spend all these damn excuses about this, that, and the third, we had to keep putting pressure on the Pelicans. Almost feels like they working it out by process of elimination. Like, you know, we've been saying, hey, man, get the medical stuff together. We've been saying this stuff for years, man. Oh, okay. They've been yeah, saying that having a physical therapist. <laughs> they just, just got a physical well, therapist. We don't redo the whole medical staff. Let's just get a physical therapist to see how that works. <laughs> Nah, Devin, bro, you already own the thing, bro. You said we should. Pre- we 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 already heard your perspective, bro. We not we not no supporters of injuries, bro, and and buy, let people buy, down with it, brother. No, we don't we don't believe in that. We we're, we're gonna do call in next week, though, Devin. So show yeah. up next week, bro. We'll let you on the panel. Up, you, can come, you can come and attempt to change our perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Shit. We done been there and seen all of that, brother. We've been doing this for a long time. We done heard all of the excuses that they're going to roll out. We understand what rosters are and depth charts and what you're supposed to do to brace your team or ensure your team to the best of your ability with a solid roster. And let me tell you something. Coming into this year, the Pelicans, the Pelicans' second line, as they're called, was one of the best in the NBA, potentially. They had Najee. They had Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance. They had players off that bench uh, that if you did it right, would have really helped the starting five. And there were games where the Pelicans, especially in the playoffs, you didn't see that bench come alive. And it's like they said most times, and it's true, that coaches team to re- seem to restrict their lineups in the playoffs to make things a lot easier. But if that if you're healthy enough to do that, that's fine. If you're not, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be, if you knew B.I. was dealing with some stuff, you knew you had to use somebody else or somebody else's to get in there and make some stuff happen. So it's always an answer for every question, brother. And it's not always injuries because you can't predict injuries. But what you can do is you can ensure yourself against the injuries with your depth chart. I'm sorry, Alexa, you got the floor. Oh, shoot. Speaking of injuries, man, hey. 
with all the injuries that Memphis was was uh, uh, dealing with, how they had them dudes come back and and beat the Pelicans two times in a row <laughs> this season. You know what I'm saying? That right there is a killer. I, I don't know. I don't really understand that. But anyway, um, yeah, the definitely the division's about to get tougher. It's about to get tougher. Um, they're definitely gonna give get uh Wimby uh some more help. But you know, it and and the size factor, that's why whatever we do, we we definitely gotta invest, make sure that we invest in size. Obviously, we we talk about a lot that we need a point guard. But golly, man, I mean, you look at Dallas, Memphis, yeah. and and the Spurs, um, maybe a little bit with, with Houston, but I mean, the size factor is, is is a big deal. So, I mean, we just there's a lot of holes that this team's got to fill. A lot of holes that this, they got to fill. I mean, there's some tough decisions that they got to make, but uh, something definitely has to be done. Don't. Please just don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Just don't do nothing. Don't do it. They got to do something, Lex. I think they're going to do something popping. Uh, like DC saying, I think he kind of hitting on it when he talks about with David Griffin. And it's the, like we've, uh, they know that the Southwest. They got to make a big move. They got to make a big yeah. move. Because and the thing is, they wouldn't have to make a big move if they had had made a series of moves that would have worked. And what I mean by that is, man, we've been talking about Daniel Gafford for some time now, yeah. and how Gafford could have helped the Pelicans. We talked about that. We talked about players all the time. It just takes imagination. You got to know your team. You got to know your team and know what the team needs. It's like if you had Valachunas, who was also available for 82 games this year, Valachunas is a double-double, and Willie underutilized him. Even if he doesn't exactly fit your scheme, you still got to utilize the player to his benefit if that's what you have. So, you know, even if you have injuries all over the place, Valachunas is available. Use them to your benefit. Use the seven-footers, the length you had to your benefit. Yeah. And the guy doesn't do that. So mm-hmm. you can't, like I said, you got to bring all that. Don't tell me about no injuries if you don't he, tell me. He, he loves stuff. Larry so much. He's trying to kill that dude. Yeah, Larry Nance can't play and do everything. Sometimes let Larry run out at the four and put a seven, put a seven foot at the five. Let him play a little four every nine again. Imagine, you no, know. No, no, Larry cannot play the four. We have magic for that. Can you stop it? <laughs> you can move God and he can play now at the three. Come on, we got Dice now. Dice gonna move up to the four, and we gonna continue to play Larry at the five. You Dice gonna move up to the four. Hey, Dice you is know what? Dice, four is, now. Dice is actually a valuable. Are we gonna bring in EJ Liddell at the four? There you go. They treat him like a Karam. If you are over six eight, you cannot get major minutes at the center spot. That's what I want to let you know about all the people that we worked out. You damn near most of them ain't over six eight. But if if you are not over six eight, uh, be you seven. cannot get major minutes at, no. at the center dude, spot. You, dude, you better have a seven foot if you got Wimby Yama in there, fool. Not you, but Willie. But mm-hmm. this is the thing, you better make sure you. He, he, he just got. He got to have a thirty eight inch bird. That's the reason we're gonna hang out here. You got to jump from he the jump moon. high. Yeah, he yeah, jump high. It's amazing, man. That's what I'm saying about knowing your team, knowing who the, who your adversaries are, and playing the league. But it, like I said, it'll it'll all be it'll all be run out. You can't get over the records. We laying down all of the facts about what the Pelicans are doing, man. And they just a process of elimination. Just got a physical therapist, so they play more games than they ever played. The next thing should be for the Pelicans to hire another physical therapist. Get two of them. If they, if you had this much going on, positive, hire another. One. Well, they let go one of them, did they? No, that was Zion's. Wasn't that Zion's personal trainer? But that was through the organization, yeah. right? That that just that just happened uh this week. It was uh what's that lady? It was it was uh, the young I, lady I, I that always the assisted Zion. They let her go. His uh his actual trainer or the lady who attended to him. I don't know exactly in which way she trained him. But um wasn't a physical therapist, she's still here. Oh, Amy's still here. Yeah, so that, that's that's what I'm saying, man. We uh, they got some work to do. They got to swing for the fences. The Southwest Division is lit. 
And each one of these teams is going to be better than what you see in them right now. You can see Houston winning more than 41 games. Memphis, if they're healthy, winning more than 27 games. And San Antonio stepping it up. So, I mean, Dallas Dallas is building a nice – they got a good foundation of players right there. So, man, listen, we can't, We got to move it up too. So, I, I can understand D.C. talk about the Trey, uh, the Trey uh, Young swing for the fence move to kind of electrify it. It might be the thing that they need to do. We'll see what he does. We know he likes to make a splash. That's for certain. We know, we know he likes to do that. All right. So anyway, with that being said, oh, yeah, we're, gonna, man. we're gonna get on up out of here, man. Listen, the, we'll, the Pels also got a they got to double down and get some more big bodies too. We get Trey Young. If we don't get some seven footers on the squad, bro, we still can be. Well, hey, and, and a little bit of a seven conundrum. footers, we gotta play them. Dude, that's you had two seven footers all last year. You had one that played you know the entire saying? season. And he didn't. Well, if you understand how the roster is constructed, when I say we got to get the seven footers and we got to trade for y'all by default, that means Larry's gone. Tell you, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Willie Green. That's the only time Willie Green will start cursing if you talk about trading Larry Nance for him. Well, I'm definitely trading them now because we got to break out of this quiet boy in So we definitely trading them. I need Willie to stop us. No, no, no. They're not yeah, talking. I want to see a few, few gray ass pop up. I need to see some goddamn frustration. They're not talking about changing the quiet boy thing. They don't see no problem with it. In their minds, that's what helped them win. I never went like that. Bro. But well, it's not, about growth, though. No, but they don't see an issue with that. They're not concentrating yeah. on that, much yeah. like the ON 29 thing. You got to see it as an issue for you to bring light and correct it. Yeah, they don't corporate. see an issue it's with that, that corporate mentality. Yeah, they don't see an issue. They think in their I'm minds, good on paper. That, it, in their minds, they think, right, and a lot of times corporate people, they lack imagination. They do, because it's black and white to them. That's how they train to think. Yeah. So it's they're not all about that paper, and the thing is, the paper don't tell everything. As, tell you know, that, that's paper. that the analytical side, I guess, of things, but you know, sometimes you just gotta see with your eyes and not not with you, you know, actually the, see with your eyes with the game, not what's on paper. You're like, well, it says here that we did this. Like, no. <laughs> did you did you forget the part where it said here that uh um there uh how many double digit leagues this team lost? Nope. Did, did you know. see that part? <laughs> Even address did, you see, that. did you see the part where we went 0 and 26 or 0 and 27? I don't care about that. We you had four or five I mean, wins the last year. That's all that matters. Yeah. But it could what I'm saying is that it could have been better. Like that, that should show like like 0 and 27 is a huge blowout. The, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like that's that's bad. That is really bad. You know what I'm saying? Like in pressure moments, like the team and 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 hey, the core and everybody was available in those games. So it's like, man, you you can't just look at one thing. You got to look at everything. Got to look at the details, man. You, you know, the I think too much of the focus is on oh, 49 and 33. You know, uh, each year he's um, you know, the win percentage has gone up, man. That's it, right. It, it's not that. But why aren't we not looking that all this team is is a borderline playing team or a first round exit? Why aren't you looking at that? And because each of those years that this this team was a playing team. That's not growth. It, you know they what I'm it, I mean, it, yeah, regular it, season is great, but how you establish your credentials and your legacy is in the playoffs. I'm not saying, look, I know we want to go to the finals. Love to go to the finals, conference fi uh, Western Conference Finals and NBA Finals, all this stuff. But the thing is, first, this team needs to start proving that you're not a you're you're a true contender and not a pretender. I mean, we could at least did what the T Wolves did. Maybe at least go to the second round like the Thunder did. Again, I keep saying them because they're the measuring stick. The rebuild for those teams started at the same time. It did. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we can't at least get to the second round. You know, we we trying to go further into the playoffs. It's not about get uh like uh oh, we want to get to the finals. Yeah, we want to get there, but we also understand that there's stats. Every single year, this team has been a play-in team. The play-in is not the playoffs. Just like 
regular season is not the playoffs. Right. It's like, you know, we we, we got to – when are we going to get out of the play? This team shouldn't have been a playing team. They really shouldn't have. Really, that game that they lost against the Spurs, that that was that was a, a heartbreaker right there. They should have won that game. It's like, look, I understand you you lost to Boston. Who else did they lose to in that stretch? Because they last they lost like what, like eight games, uh, home games or something like that. They beat yeah. the, they beat the Bucks before. Then they played Boston. I think they played. Hold on, let me yeah. pull it up next. Hold on. I'll pull I'm it up. Sorry. It was a horrible stretch of games, man. Yeah, it was. It was really horrible. It fell, it fell a hell apart badly toward the back end of the season. And uh, they even started losing. Couldn't even buy a game at home. And then it's crazy is that what? Austin, against the Phoenix, Kings, Orlando, practice, Orlando, and San yeah, Antonio. Orlando, yeah. Orlando was that team. The Lakers either. Yeah, and the Lakers. That's a lot of – it's like – and then the thing is, look, by the time they changed it, they, they started practicing in, in the SKC against the Kings. <laughs> like, what? Like, yes. no. Y'all been having problems playing at home. Y'all ain't winning at home. All, all, the game, all the games that they had, including against the Thunder, were um, like the last 10 games were home uh, at home were losses. Yep. And and they the the only time that they won was when they were playing the Kings and, and they practiced in the SKC. Y'all should have been done did that. First what time you practicing a practice facility. Apparently, there's something going on. You need to get over the hump. Playing, I don't know, man. This, this, no, the hey. people don't let the a family don't let that, that. Listen, what she said was very vital. What she just dropped was true. About that, it might smile, sm- sound like a small detail, but listen. That's actually a big thing because they found that out because they were asking them, what's the difference between how you guys are winning on the road versus why you can't win at home? And they started de- delving into it and they asked them about the, where do you guys practice? Well, we practice in the arena in which we play and they have a familiarity with the arena they practice and then they come out, they win the game. Well, when they came to the home situation, they would always practice in the practice facility on airline. It's like, and why what, did they change that? Like after they lost three games in a row. Exactly. Then one of them said, then somebody said, Hey man, let's do what we do on the road. Let's practice in the arena. And then they did it and they won. They, yeah, they, they did it one time and then, and then okay, see, they didn't do it. No, they went back to doing it. Cause that's what Willie green does. That, 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 yeah, when, when that something was a good worked, assessment for that one game. You finally found something that worked, <laughs> and then these. you go away from it. <laughs> and that's that 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 that's how he he coaches. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. I mean, I I didn't understand that at all. And the thing is, it's like even with the Kings, the Pelicans had the Kings number this year. So I don't think either way whether they would have practiced practice. practice practiced in the, uh, the SKC compared to the practice facility, I don't know if that would have had a huge effect. But golly, I mean, be a little superstitious, dog. Practice in the SKC. I mean, if any... If any what, what do they have to lose? Right. I, I think that was a good a good thing for them to do, but they had to, they, they had to decipher it. But like I said, I, the way it looks at like, like uh, in, uh, Devin asking about the Zach Eady thing, we covered that early in the show, uh, Brother Devin, so you can go back and listen to it. We talked about, we, we covered the story about them pre-draft with Edie. We also talked about other prospects as well, so you can feel free to go back early in the show. All right, but yeah, it's this just one of the things that the Pelicans, man, listen, and ain't no more comfortable stuff about to happen. Like I said, the Southwest is getting, it's about to be real this yeah. year. It's going, it's, it's going down. So all the stuff that we talked about, because they have some, some really good coaches. I mean, the best coach in NBA history. Is in the Southwest. You'll have assets. And Dallas is representing the, the this division very well right now. And let me tell you something. They are going to be a huge target. And Memphis, Memphis is definitely coming back, man. I mean, they like they got Jemison, GG, tri- Triple J, and Ja. Them it's four right down. there. And, and they, they got a lot of they got a lot of centers, you know, linked in the draft of Memphis too. Memphis ain't stupid. 
they yeah, still they was going on in that position. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's why the yeah, that's why they did. They they traded um uh, uh what is his name? Aquaman, uh Steven Adams. Yeah, they traded mm-hmm. traded him to Houston to get up off him. So he ain't but, even there no more. They were they, they were thinking way ahead. See, that's what the Pelicans need to do, man. That's what the Pelicans need to do. That, that will require vision, Lex. And that will require you yeah, also it does. understanding right. that what imagine. you've been doing to this point hasn't been working. That will require that. See, we have a way of doing things, and we have yet to accept failure. Maybe the trading of BI is them accepting that everything they have set up and have been doing is a failure, and they reshift and refocus. But that will require vision, and as Q says, and you just said, some imagination. You know, they have to uh, think outside the box. Now, we do have Bryce Graham coming in, so maybe he provides a little ability for us to be, I guess, more creative because he's he's younger. You know, younger people a lot of times have unique ideas. They're not going to try to follow all of the trends. They usually try to create a new one, or at least go with something that's a newer trend. Be more willing to adapt to change, to reshift. And if the Pelicans' current state isn't more of a need to reshift, I don't know what the hell is. So if they don't see this and everything that we've been through, and this is the prime opportunity to go ahead and reshape the roster, and how you do things, this may be the last chance we get with this current uh, roster and regime. Because if if you go, in my opinion, I think Zion's contract is what? This is the second year of his mm-hmm. contract kicking in? So we got four more years of Zion, right? Mm-hmm. You got about two years, man. We're on the clock. Because we all know these guys take mega deals, right? Once they take the money, right around the middle of that contract, if you still is fiddling around in the same position as what is this this kid was when you drafted him, we still just meddling around, making playoffs here, making playoffs there. We're, we're uh, the super contending uh, player team. I think we got all the playing records. We probably got – we leading in every category of playing. Anything that requires longevity, I'm pretty sure the public has got it. We always in the point. You know, um, if we're still there, then can you really be mad at Zion for requesting the trade or saying he wants out by year 2027? If you look at all the situuations with Anthony Davis and and, and CP3. It's it's all of them. Let's just not just AD. There's been a consistent reoccurring situation through all this and and really that that's why it's kind of funny because it even goes beyond griff it goes beyond that even when dimps was here like you know the thing is like just i don't know how they're doing i think you talked about how uh the their system like how how they they run this thing like there's so many blueprints out here on how to run your organization. I mean, we've talked about Miami. We've talked about the Spurs. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you can even throw in Dallas for crying out loud. I mean, you have blueprints on how to, you know, what you need to have a successful team. But it it definitely does start from the top because there's there's too many reoccurring events that just scream out, look, you all don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. And and the and the fact that you know it to use the excuse well because they do this a lot oh we're a small market team stop saying that just because you're a small market team doesn't mean that you have to have a small market mindset you don't you 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 shouldn't have a small market mentality look the Bucks they're a small market team but they came out and won a championship Memphis is a small market team. But they've been making the playoffs. The T Wolves are a small market team. Look at where they got. The Thunder are a small market team. 
Look at where they got. Like, it's like, so why aren't they using that small, oh, we're, we're, we're just a small market team. We can't do it. We can't do this or that. But yet you're, you're, you're using that a, a, as an excuse on why you can't do your job. That makes absolutely no sense. All those teams I named are small market teams. But they don't have a small market mentality. And that's the difference. Stop Ooh. talking about oh, we're small market. Get out of that mentality and think bigger. Because it can be done. Yeah. I like I that. I like that, Lex. I think I think you want it. Because yes. you are what you believe you are. So if you yeah. consider yourself a small market that. team and you think small and everything yeah. is small, your results are going to be small. Exactly. <laughs> and minimal. Small and cheap. <laughs> and, and, and Griff, I don't know how many times Griffin said that, y'all. Great breakdown. He, he, he mentioned all oh, the well, words. That's great. Market. That's, that's no. awesome. Just drilling that same message in, into the fan base and, and themselves and everything else. Yeah, we, yeah, I mean, we got to step it up this year, man. Uh, we got to compete. We got to, we get, we got to step it up, man. We got to step it up. Ain't no doubt about it, man. This, this, this season, this upcoming season, season will show a lot. The BI, it starts with the BI thing, man. I mean, we, we looking yeah. at the draft and then the BI thing. And, and, and you're right, Big 12. I see what you said. Yeah. Winning, once you start winning, because look, the, the small market, if you start winning, that makes you a big market. In a lot of ways, it actually point. makes right. you a big market because that's you're winning, you're winning championships. That's right. That's a great that's, point. That's an excellent point. And that's actually a unique point that I've never heard anybody bring up pertaining, yeah. uh, pertaining to the Pelicans because, yeah. I mean, man, you, you if that, it, it kind of highlights the issue that we've been saying with the team. Everything is about mentality. Mentality, outlook, vision, direction, focus, um, goals. You know, like, let's let's be real. We can look at a winning team, right? And you look at goals. Most teams, they have a goal in the beginning of the season that won the finals. What was their goal? Their goal was to win the finals. There's very few teams, uh, probably not any teams, that have won the finals or championship any matter that didn't have a goal of winning the championship. You know what I'm saying? And inside of those goals, you got certain check marks you got to hit. Okay, I want to win the finals this year. Well, we need to go on the let's talk about this all the time. We need to go on the 10 game winning streak. How many finals teams or teams that won the finals never went on a 10 game winning streak? Or at least like won like nine games and lost three. Uh Double digit winning streak, you know what I'm saying? Like the goals, the direction, the, the focus, where is it with our front office? And we really don't know, being honest. We come here and we, we try and uh, provide great ideas and commentary on what should happen, but we have no idea what the focus is in the front office because everything they do constantly shows you a lack of direction a lack of a plan, a lack of focus, a weak mentality, small ideas, thinking to fix, uh, let's fix the problem today, and the 10 problems that fixing the problem today causes tomorrow, we'll just handle them once we get to them. <laughs> we have no vision. We can't see the forest from the trees a lot of times. And if you're an organization and you understand that and you actually want to win, that's where it starts. This is the big off season oh, for man. David Griffin. Five years. Dennis Machia. Yeah. You know, all these people, because you're not going to continue to gain the support of, uh, of the people here. Because these people here, we revalue the ability to be able to be resilient, to be mentally tough, to yeah. be grinders and put in the work and, and hey, then be talented. That that, that's what New Orleans is. is. That's us. That's what we, that's what makes up people from here. This is what we embody. And it does not show that in the team. Nope. And that's the difference nope. between the support that the Saints have 
and the support the Pelicans have. Now, the Saints, they're going through a rough patch right now. But they've had a consistent run of showing all of those things. It showed up in the team, and it wound up in us actually winning the championship and being a contender to win the championship multiple years. I don't think people here are so greedy where we have to be a dynasty, although who wouldn't want that? But we respect hard work and seeing you doing the right thing and telling us the truth because New Orleans people are laid back, we cool, but we're not stupid. They think because we cool and laid back and we be chill that we stupid. And when we get turned, we get turned. So we go from laid back and chill to really aggressive and angry. <laughs> you know, um, and I think they, they a lot of times the pals, uh, they take advantage of the fan base and the loyalty that we have or the perceived loyalty that we have based on the Saints. And they just try to do enough to just keep us sucked in. So a lot of times is, are they actually really trying to win? Are they trying to win enough to just make some money? Trying to put butts in the seats. The sooner we figure that out, and, and they figure that out, <laughs> if, it's, if it's what I just said, then you know the jig is up. We might actually lose the team because as much as people want the penalty, here, if that is what they're trying to do and what they're going to continue to do, people are not going to support the team. We don't like phoniness. We don't like fake. It is what it is. You trying to win and you losing, and we see you doing everything, taking the swings and missing, and but really trying, people still gonna respect the team. They might be mad about it. They might say this or that, but they are gonna respect it. They are gonna ride for them. But if you keep taking the funk, man, like all this shim sham and beautiful word salad and flip floppy ass shit, man, this ain't this ain't no representation of us. And we don't respect you. And the sad part about the team we have now, the Pelicans are extremely talented. Talent don't mean a lot if you don't know how to utilize it, which is the problem they're experiencing, or if you don't know what to do with it. We had multiple players that went other places, won championships, impacted other teams. We get assets for them, and we don't turn it into shit. If we look around the league and everything that we've provided to help other teams. It is a damn shame that we're in a position where we should at the very least be in the same position as the Oklahoma City Thunder. And like I said, I'm gonna say this, then we're going for a minute. This Brandon Ingram trade right here. And I guess all you can say to CJ McCollum trade too, because we know he gotta go because Trey got stuck. And we need a point guard. These two trades this this is pretty much it for this regime. They down they done, they done fucked up so much. They down to their last really last chance because I don't think you're gonna turn CJ into too much. But we still got some picks, so you never know. But they down to their last chance or two to be able to write the shit. There's no more band-aiding and, and fixing band-aid shit after this. You gotta knock one of these out the ball. If they messed up the BI trade, it would be bad. They probably would be the end of the world. They still have an opportunity of of a last ditch ditch effort with CJ. But if they they fuck up both of those, man, that's it. That's it. Zion's probably out of here. David Griffin's fired. We resetting everything, and we're back to rebuilding. Hopefully, we have a stock stockpile of picks if that happens. But nonetheless, (laughs) intrigued to see what we do, man. They need to go. It won't matter. They won't use them. Stop playing. And swing for the fences, man. Go down fighting. Can you please be a good representation of our goddamn team and try to do the most? Make a big move. There ain't no better time than now. There's no reason to keep fucking waiting. What's up, fam? This is Big Q from PPR. Thank y'all for watching. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the share button. Hit all the notification buttons. And make sure you follow us here every week as we talk about all things Pelicans. Much love. Go Pels.